We are all doing life, but who knew it could be this funny? Thanks for checking out our podcast. We call it Doing Life with Maria and Chad. Chad, I finally have a weekend away with my husband, and we're going to Bisbee, and I've never been. Okay, I've been one time. This is Bisbee, Arizona, right on the border of Mexico and Arizona. I have a list of things that you can check out when you're there. We'll get into that today. Well, I have no idea what to do, so you're going to have to uh, plan my vacation for me. (laughs) Stay tuned. That and more on today's podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, do I look all rested and relaxed, Maria? You have a little bit of a glow to you. What's going on? (laughs) I am pregnant with baby, actually, at triplets. <laughs> no, I'm so uh, excited. We just had a uh, a family vacation. Our daughter was on spring break last week, and I, well, I should probably update because on our last podcast, I was talking about how my daughter was going to fly for the first time, and she flew and saw grandma, and everything was fine, like no issue. She's she's she a, pro. Had a great time. She had a great time. She was she was there. She was ready to come home. She it was all the timing was good on everything, and then we got a chance. We drove um, to San Diego. For like a short trip, we took the dog. We stayed right next to this dog beach, which was nice. It was convenient because parking is so crazy close to the beach. Um, yeah. But I saved a, a little memento from our uh, road trip. And this is, uh, my daughter did not know that I was secretly recording her as we were driving. She is singing along with Beyonce. She's really into it. <laughs> I should add that she is a musical child. She's in the orchestra, but singing is not her best talent. I love your daughter so much. She has, and she gets it from you and your wife, but she has this love of life. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, she puts it all out there. Yeah. She, you know, with all her music and her dancing and then just singing in the car like that, oh, she... She is a, a gem. She really is. So my daughter will listen to our podcast from time to time. Should I tell her to listen or not tell her and wait till somebody tells her that she was on oh, the podcast? Heck yeah. Okay. She tell she has no listen. idea I recorded her. No no clue whatsoever. Uh, Until now. Until now. <laughs> and I know you you actually have a uh, time off coming up this weekend, right? You're going to do something. Well, it, uh, coming up the weekend actually of Easter, okay. Um, I actually have a weekend off, like a Saturday, Sunday. Uh-huh. Uh, I work at Costco, so Sunday is Easter, and we're closed on Easter, and then I randomly got Saturday off, and my husband and I haven't done anything for ourselves in a long time. I mean, we'll sit in the backyard and have wine, and we watch mo- We're in this rut where we eat dinner, we watch a movie go to bed. I mean, that's kind of what we've been doing. Yeah, I think that's what everybody's been doing. Yeah. So anyway, we got this weekend off and I was like, we have to do something, please. And we've never been to Bisbee. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So I was looking around at VRBOs and I only can do one night and usually VRBOs are for two nights. So we got a room at the Bisbee Grand Hotel. Ooh. Uh, it's not grand, but this is Bisbee. <laughs> it's all old there, but yeah. What, uh, yeah, but what's kind of cool is each room has a different theme. And the ones that were left because of the timing were was the blue room, the naturalist room, and there was like a, a, a Mexico-themed room, which I wanted to do, but that was the suite, and it was like 50 bucks more, and I'm like, ah, eh, whatever, we're not going to spend that much time. <clears throat> and then there was like the hippie room. Okay. Which room do you think I picked? The hippie room. I wanted to pick the hippie room. <laughs> Husband liked the blue room. So we got the blue room. <laughs> well, I, I, I should tell you, I want to talk about Bisbee, but we actually named one of our rooms the pumpkin room. And it's because <laughs> we bought this couch from Facebook or Craigslist or whatever. And uh-huh. it smells like it had pumpkin candles lit all over it before we bought it. Because <laughs> so the whole room yeah. smells like pumpkin. So now we name that room, the front room in our house, the <laughs> pumpkin room. A couple of things about Bisbee. Um, you know about the big stairs there? You can climb the stairs. 
I've never been. I have no idea. I know nothing about Bisbee. So you'll have to check the date. I mean, it'd be a miracle if you're there when it happens. But I know once a year they have this thing where you climb the stairs and it's like a thousand, two thousand stairs. I don't know. It's a crazy amount of stairs. A. B. A famous comedian who you may know lives in Bisbee. Did you know this? No. So he chose to live there because he could go to Tucson and fly anywhere. And he wanted to kind of live on a border town. And he could get a lot for his money. When you see, when you get to Bisbee, you'll understand why. Um, Doug Stanhope is his name. Oh, okay. And I actually, because we had nothing else to do when we were in Bisbee, I drove past <laughs> his place. And it's just this big, like, kind of funky, speaking of the hippie room, it's like all these weird colors and stuff. But um, there's an old mine that's closed there. You'll have plenty. And there's a lot of history, a lot of things to see there. Well, and that was one of the things. I was like, okay, so yeah, we can sit on our little patio and drink wine and I want to like go through all the shops and maybe do some wine bar hopping. Yep. <clears throat> and I and I talked to my husband about the mine thing. I want to go down into the mine and I don't know exactly how far we are from Karchner Caverns, but I want to go to Karchner Caverns because I've never done that either. And I thought we'll leave early, do that on the way. And then head into Bisbee. Yeah, I mean, there's you could stop at the caverns. You could also do we're planning your trip here on the podcast. You could go to Tombstone, Arizona. Have you been to Tombstone? I haven't been to Tombstone either. Oh, I'm not. I haven't done any of this stuff. You're gonna drive right past all the things. So all those uh, that'll be cool. We'll have to hear how that goes after your Easter weekend off. Um, I've been working hard on my podcast that I've been doing solo. We've talked about it a little bit on this podcast. But I've been, (laughs) today's episode is all about the, um, have you heard about the guy that heals people in South Africa by farting on their head? No, that's awesome. So I, I did a whole piece. If you, if you haven't listened to the my podcast, it's called That Just Happened. Go to patreon.com slash TJH. Um, that's where you can find it. But one of the things that I've been doing on a monthly basis for certain subscribers, there's different tiers based on what you pay. You get to, you know different things. Um, I, I did this podcast. It's only monthly. It's called Your New Favorite Song. And on a scale of one to 10, how much do I love music, Maria? Oh, that would be an 11. 11. So this is the promo <laughs> for this this month's episode. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the March edition of Your New Favorite Song. And this one is going to be a little different because I didn't pick it. It came from a patron of mine on the Patreon page who's at the all-access level, like you are, or else you wouldn't be hearing this, uh, paying a little bit more every month. And I do appreciate all the support. So if you can remember last month in February, I said, hey, If you have a song that you think I should feature, let me know. And I received this message from Chris about a song that I had never heard, but it definitely fits for your new favorite song. I think we can all agree that things are crazy in the world right now. And in times like these, we always like to think of better times. Like with rose-colored glasses, we look back at the past and look at nostalgia, right? Thinking about how things were better when maybe they weren't, but your new favorite song for March is so that's it. I, it's, all, it's all I give you. Ah, so I want to see if ah, you can guess what song it was. So it was suggested. If I can guess, if you can guess it, I'll tell you what it is for free. Could, do I get a hint? It's a nostalgic song. Um, Blackbird by the Beatles. Ooh, does that remind you of better times? I don't know. I just like that song. You just like that song. <laughs> See, that's the tough thing. Honestly, it's a challenge for me because it could be anything. It could be Blackbird or it could be Jack and Diane or it could be any nostalgic uh, Bad to the Bone. I don't know. It could be any song. Um, uh, you're wrong. But if you want to if you want to know what it is, uh, go to my podcast, subscribe again, patreon.com slash TJH, and you can, uh, you can check that out. Now, speaking of music, I can't remember if... If you came to our backyard concert with all my Mexico friends, were you guys there? Uh, I don't think we made it. No, it was su- like super COVID times. So I don't think we made it, made it that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That's it when was everybody COVID got times. sick, right? No, not at our party. That was a whole different party. <laughs> it was a we different went party. To. <laughs> okay. My, my party was safe. Everybody was healthy. <laughs> okay. So what the deal is, is I had this group of friends. There's 10 families total and we're all pretty close. And we go down to Mexico once a year, uh, coming up in May. And a couple of the guys put together a band. So we've got a bass player and a drummer and a couple guitar players and a couple singers. 
And they just play in Mexico or play in our backyards. I mean, it's just kind of fun. And they're they're pretty good, actually. Not record signing label good, but they're they're good they're for fun. a backyard band. Yeah. They're fun. So we had the COVID party. And then we ended up meeting up with these guys, uh, some of the guys at a bar uh, a few weeks ago. And and uh, Todd Sunday says, so I think it's time for a spring festivus. We're like, what the hell are you talking about? He goes, well, you got your backyard done. He goes, I think we need to put the band together. Spring festivus. Because <laughs> he likes to talk funny. Yeah. So apparently uh, we've been volunteered to have spring festivus. Uh Post-COVID? Can I say post-COVID times? Yeah. I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we're going to have the guys put their band together and invite everybody over. And you and Steph are certainly welcome. And there will be a lot of drinking, so you'll just have to stay the night. We can do that. So I am half COVID uh, good because I have the first shot. I got the first uh, vaccination. I get the second one on Thursday, April 1st. So I'll be good. Is it after that? Is that when the, the, the Roaring Twenties party is going to be? Yeah, Spring Festivus will be, I don't know yet, but it probably will be April because I actually have another weekend off okay. in April, and I'm kind of excited about that. And my brother Paul, who lives in Florida, he may fly in for Spring Festivus because he loves all you guys. That would be good. That would be good. Yeah, let me know the details. That would be uh, something we'll definitely um, be there for that. Um, I have a psychology question for you, Maria. Oh, okay. This is kind of a, is it just me, I'm asking. So... Um, have you been to In-N-Out? Yes. Have you been to the drive-thru? Yes. All right. Tell me if this is just me. Since COVID, I haven't eaten inside of an In-N-Out. So when I'm in the drive-thru and they ask, will you be eating this in your vehicle today? I feel like such a loser. (laughs) (laughs) I, I really, I really do. Like, I'm like, I feel like such a loser. Well, because you say yes? Yes, I'm going to be eating it in the car by myself. No, you're not a loser. Is, I mean, Everybody is that, does that. Every time they say it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be eating it in my car by myself. <laughs> kind of like the person going to a movie by themselves. Okay, well, here's my question then. So you order your internet in and out. <clears throat> do you go and like park somewhere and eat it in your car? Or do you drive home and eat it at home? I get to the first available open spot and just start going crazy and devouring that burger. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't pass go. I do not drive home. It's best when it's fresh, but by the, usually when I'm there, you wait in the darn line. I don't know if you you live in Arizona, but the lines at In and Out have been crazy since they've closed their dining room. I think the dining room's open now, right? I think so. Yeah. I may never go back inside. I lo- I love sitting in my car eating alone. I just hate that question. Will you be eating in your vehicle today? <laughs> Yeah, I will. Well, you sh- you should say, are you going to judge me if I say yes? <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, 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 it's sad to say that I've, I probably go there like weekly, it seems like, you know, I love yeah. that place so much and it's very inexpensive and it's good every time. But every single time they ask me that, I'm like, yeah, I'll be that guy. So when I go to Taco Bell, because you know, that's my favorite. Yeah. Um, I always get an extra, like I'll order whatever, meal number six or whatever the hell it is. And then I always order an extra bean burrito because I eat the bean burrito on my way home. You need something to, <laughs> to drive. I need something to like eat and drive. And so the other day I went and I ordered whatever it was and they're like, is that it? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh no, wait, I need my bean burrito. <laughs> they're like, okay. We thought you were missing <laughs> something. This is Maria, <laughs> you right? Weirdo? Are you going to be eating this in your car today? <laughs> I don't know. I just... Okay. So, so listen, speaking of eating, my husband and I were sitting on the patio by the fire drinking our wine and I was telling him about this story because I watch, do you ever watch the Dodo videos on Facebook and they're always about animals and that were in a bad position and then they're cared for and now they're all happy? Do you ever watch those? No, I've never even heard of it. I'll have to check it out. Oh my gosh. If you're an animal lover, uh, the Dodo Facebook page always has videos of animals that were, you know, rescued because they were living in a train station and they captured them and I don't, wait, wait, you know wait. what I mean. I'm Those googling kind of it right app. now is it hunting dodos kill 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 is that the right am I on <laughs> no, the right spot no. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. it's just called the dodo okay. d-o-d-o anyway okay anyway 
I was watching I was watching videos on the dodo and there was this like golden retriever mm-hmm. and the dog weighed like 300 pounds and I'm exaggerating but the dog was extremely overweight right and the owners decided not they, they didn't want the dog anymore and so some foster parents took it in put it on a diet and it couldn't walk anyway long story short the dog's happy now and is at an appropriate weight but it took like a year or two I mean it was like crazy but what they have to do is feed the dog in one of those bowls that's like a maze so the dog doesn't eat so fast you know oh, what I'm talking about yes I've seen that yes uh-huh so I was telling my husband this story and I go, so now they have to feed the dog in these little maize bowls. And my husband had such a good answer. He goes, what's the difference? If you feed the dog the same amount of food in a regular bowl or the maize bowl, if he's still getting the same amount of food, what's the difference? I think it's training them not to be, to gorge themselves. Like I probably need a maize bowl when I go to In-N-Out, you know, <laughs> just so, so you like sometimes have you ever eaten so fast because you're hungry and you're like, I don't even remember what that tasted like, but I think it was good, you know? Yeah. I need yeah, a maize yeah, yeah. bowl. I, yeah. I think it's just to train them not to go crazy and like, I don't know. Like eat to slow so down when they eat, I guess. Yeah. That's probably the thought. But I, I just thought that was kind of an interesting question and I didn't have an answer and I'm like. I don't know. Let me ask Chad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. No, it's, it's probably just to slow down the eating process. I do have a present for you today, Maria. Um, I have uncovered. Is it wrapped? It's um, it's for your ear holes and everybody listening to the podcast. Okay. It's a song about Maria. I found this on Spotify. Maria, Maria, poop, poop. Maria, Maria, poop. Maria, Maria, poop, poop. Maria, Maria, poop. Maria. Poop, 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 poop. Maria. Poop, 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 poop. I think you kind of get it, right? I love that song so much for so many reasons it goes on for three (laughs) minutes and 20 seconds i don't want to break the licensing rule and play the whole thing but if you're looking to hear that so here's the story behind this guy his name is matt farley he was part of a band and like most bands probably like the bands that play in your backyard it's not their main source of income and he wanted to be a professional musician but his bands weren't good enough so what he did is he took hundreds of names and created unique songs. It's not like they're overdubs. He does this. He must be driving himself insane. He records Maria Poops, Chad Poops, insert name here. So he is the odd man who sings about poop, puke, and pee on Spotify. And then TikTok got a hold of this guy. And now people are making TikToks out of him. And he's making like 70 grand a year singing these stupid songs. Oh my God, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And let me tell you why I love it. Uh And it's so funny. Oh my God. Because you just pooped? Well, I did, yes. (laughs) But maybe this is going to be too much information. Just like my daughter did when she was younger, I have a habit of clogging the toilet. (laughs) Okay. And so (laughs) you just rolled your eyes. I saw you. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I was just, I had an itch. (laughs) <laughs> and so there is one toilet in our house that's the super duper flusher uh-huh. and so i am required to only poop in that bathroom <laughs> all right let me play a little more of your song maria, maria, poop, poop. maria maria poop maria maria poop poop maria maria poop yay all right so this guy's name matt Farley? Yeah, just look up the... I'll, I'll send you the link. The Odd Man Who Sings About Poop, Puke, and Pee. Honestly, if you go to Spotify and search Maria Poop, search whatever, Eric Poop, there's probably an Eric Poop song. Uh, our friend Leslie just celebrated a birthday. I sent her a link to Leslie Poop. Um, so yeah, that's all happening. Let's get together and do uh, the final question for today. Ready? Yep. The final Question. All right, this is a very simple one. What's the best concert you've ever been to? As you think about it, Maria, I'll give out our phone number. Again, the best concert you've ever been to, 424-235-3657. Let us know your answer. Maria, what is your answer? 
Okay, I know you hate it when I do this, but I have two. You have two answers. <laughs> That's a surprise to me. No, it's not. Um, the first answer is Billy Joel. Okay. And it was recent, you know, like his last tour. And it was because, and we've talked about this before, for some reason, my young daughter loves Billy Joel. That's right. And when Billy yeah. Joel came to Phoenix, mm-hmm. I did everything I could to get tickets because I kind of knew he's getting older. He wasn't really going to tour anymore. So I was able to bring Lucy, my husband and I were able to bring Lucy to see Billy Joel. And I looked at her probably for 75% of the concert. Yeah. I just wanted to see her face looking up at Billy Joel and singing the words to the song. I mean, it just... It just warmed my heart. I thought that was amazing. No. Now, as far as concerts for me, it has to be the Old Dominion Kenny Chesney concert we went to, and we were sitting in the sandbar. Yep. Or right standing up, in up, the sandbar. Up close to the stage. Oh, my gosh. That absolutely my favorite concert of all time. My husband didn't like it because he had to stand the whole time. But I loved it. <laughs> those are great answers. And I could answer those as well. Um, those were both great concerts. I go back to one that was long before you and I had the access that we had to go to all these concerts. Um, uh-huh. My wife and I barely had enough money to get into this concert. It was Woodstock 99. And we drove there. And I want to say for the three days, it cost like $150 per person. And we were uh-huh. just out of college. I mean, that was... That was it. And we barely ate. We barely had water <laughs> to drink because we just had enough money to get tickets. And that I would say that's probably the best concert that I've ever been to because of all the there were tons of great bands. I mean, just off the top of my head, James Brown opened the concert on the first wow. day. Um, like people you wouldn't think. Kid Rock was there. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Metallica, um, Jewel randomly Elvis Costello I mean it was a wide oh, range wow. of people those are just the ones that thought of Buck Cherry on and on and on but yeah that was back in 99 just out of college so that was probably my favorite um, if you're listening to our podcast and you want to answer the question again what's been the best concert you've ever been to call us at 424-235-3657 thanks again for listening to doing life with Maria and Chad follow us on Instagram at Maria and Chad and Facebook you can now listen for free in all these places the radio.com app on the iHeartRadio app Spotify Spotify, the Amazon Music app, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Pandora, Podbean, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode.